before we go on to understand these patterns, what are the findings in chronic sinusitis? We're all aware of those, but for a quick revision, we could have secretions within the sinuses, which could be hyperdense, as we see here. We could have adjacent bony thickening, adjacent bony sclerosis, which is a marker of chronicity. We could have certain calcifications, which, which would be peripheral and scattered. Remember, hyperdensity is a sign of benign disease. It practically, it, it basically excludes tumor for us. The other cause of hyperdensity being fungal infection and hemorrhage. So there are various patterns, type 1 to type 5, which have been described based on the distribution of disease, based on these sinonasal drainage pathways, and which helps the surgeon in turn to decide on his choice of surgical technique. So pattern one is the infundibular pattern. We have seen the infundibulum draining the maxillary sinus and the ethmoid sinuses. So when the infundibulum is obstructed, the sinuses that are involved are the ipsilateral maxillary sinus and the anti-ethmoidal group of sinuses. Pattern two, the osteomatal unit pattern, which will obstruct all the anterior group of sinuses. So we have disease in the anterior group of cells, including the frontal, the anterior ethmoidals, and the maxillary sinuses. A sub-pattern here would be the frontal recess pattern, which just obstructs the frontal sinus drainage pathway, and hence disease will be localized to the ipsilateral frontal sinus. Sphenoethmoidal recess pattern, which is the type 3 pattern involving the posterior group of sinuses, and now disease will be localized to the sphenoid sinus plus minus posterior ethmoidal air cells. As we go from type 1 to type 3 pattern, the chances of recurrence after surgery would increase. Also, the, uh, the surgery becomes more and more complex. So it helps us prognosticate in a way. Type 4 is sinonasal polyposis, which is diffuse involvement of the sinuses, usually treated medically, surgery reserved only for refractory cases, very difficult to operate upon. Type 5 is the sporadic pattern, which is random involvement of often single sinuses. So this is the infundibular pattern of the disease, where Disease involves the inf uh, maxillary infundibulum and there is mucosal thickening in the maxillary sinus, the normal infundibulum on the right side. OMU pattern which involves the entire OMU as a 3D space and hence obstructs the frontal anti-ethmoidals and the maxillary sinus. The frontal recess pattern involving the frontal recess on the left, left side, right side being normal and hence disease limited to the left frontal sinus. The sphenoethmoidal recess pattern, which is in, uh, involving this, uh, the posterior group of sinuses, where we see this mucosal thickening involving the sphenoid sinus, blockage of this ostium and recess, seen well on the sagittal as well as the axial images, sagittal being a little better, easier to evaluate SCR pattern. And there is this mucoperiosteal thickening leading to this uh, sclerosis of the bony walls and hyperdensity within the ipsilateral sphenoid sinus. Sinonasal polyposis, which is the type 4 pattern, which is, uh, we all, we have seen this very commonly, polyps um, leading to expansion of the nasal cavity, expansion of the infundibula with some hyperdensity within, and this hyperdensity could also represent allergic uh, fungal sinusitis, very commonly seen in these cases. Despite extending superiorly, despite eroding these bones, despite remodeling uh, this, uh, these uh, structures around it, the polypoidal shape is still maintained in a case of sinonasal polyposis. Truncation of the bulb middle uh, turbinate, the bulbous portion of the middle turbinate is a clue to the presence of polyposis in a case of chronic rhinosinusitis. <laughs> <laughs>